Hi, Valley Church. Um, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, I'm really excited this evening to share with you just something that's very close to my heart. Um, and um, it's going to be a verse that we're going to look at um, from Romans, and it's going to be part of my testimony. Um, and so I hope you um, enjoy listening to it and that God's, my heart is really that God would really um, bring such a revelation to each of us about what he really means when he says that we are adopted as sons into his family. Um, so that's my heart for this evening. Um, if you want a title for this evening, it would probably be The Miracle of Adoption, um, which I think is partly my story and partly what all of our stories is with God. Um, so The Miracle of Adoption, and the verse we're going to uh, look at is Romans 8, verse 15. We know it really well. It says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. So that's Romans 8 verse 15. We're going to look at that. So just as sort of by way of introduction, I guess, um, some of you know my story very well. Some of you don't. <laughs> so um, we um, adopted our beautiful little boy, Josh, um, almost eight years ago. He's a happy, thriving, beautiful um, boy. Many of you um, know him well, I'm sure. Um, and uh, just briefly, our story was a five-year a journey, painful journey of desiring children, of desperately, desperately wanting children, but we weren't able to fall pregnant naturally at that time. Um, and we, um, yes, after many, much pain, much kind of um, surgery, trips to doctors, um, grappling with guards, um, because it was a desire that we had and we knew a desire that God had put within us and a promise that he'd made to us in his word that we would be parents, but we weren't seeing the fruits of us. And then we um, we came to South Africa in 2011 and we just knew that we just needed to start the process of adoption. Um, and that's what we did. And a few months later, we had a beautiful three months baby boy in our arms and in our family. So that's my story. Um, and we're gonna pick up on bits of that as we go along as we look through this verse. Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, um, I think we're gonna look at um, four main things through this um, little talk. Um, we're gonna look at adoption. What is adoption? What does it mean? What's my take on adoption having been through that process in the in the natural um, and what does it tell us number two what does it tell us about our father what does it tell us about God um, and number three why does Paul in this verse choose to say about the spirit of adoption and number four what does it mean what does it mean for us now in the middle of covid <laughs> crisis or just as we are um uh, as people at Valley Church so let's go let's look at the first um the first thing I want to look at is adoption. Um, so what does adoption mean? And why did Paul choose to use this word here when he could have used quite a few other words? The words and um, the Greek word that he used, some translations in the Bible you might be reading, it might say um, you didn't receive, um, sorry, but you did receive a spirit of sonship or adoption into sonship. So this word adoption, um, uh, the word for sonship here or the word for adoption into sonship this is the word that um, Paul chose to use and it was a term um, as a Roman he understood in terms of adoption so we know kind of um, it wasn't really a kind of Jewish concept so much because we know under sort of the mosaic law and so on if a family member had died if a parent died 
um, then the children would then be looked after by um, that person's brother or so that they would just sort of come under that uh, covering. So the Roman idea of adoption is what we know Paul is kind of referring to here. And the Roman adoption, in some ways, is very similar to kind of adoption as we know it nowadays. It was a it was a legal process and it was definite and it was final and it meant that a child was legally transferred under the um, very powerful authority of the Roman father, the, the father in a Roman family, it was a very, um, it was a, a really position of power and authority. Um, and the uh, Roman adoption process meant that um, legally a child would come under that new um, sort of um, fatherhood um, as it were. And there were three main consequences of, of that happening. So firstly, the, the, the old family no longer had any power or over that child um, anymore. This child moved into a new family and became totally and completely and legally under the authority of that family. Secondly, they would become the legal heir to the, father, the, the new adopted father's estate. They would be legitimate um, sons and would have full right to their inheritance. And thirdly, um, the, the really amazing thing, which has such a beautiful picture for us, um, and what I think Paul's trying to convey here with being the adoption, is that the, the, the old life was actually completely wiped out. So if there were any debts that that um that that person um had in that previous family they were completely wiped out at that moment of adoption and it was almost like there was a completely clean slate and a new life begun um under this new family and under this new authority i mean how what an amazing picture of what um god's done for us you know when we um legally um we are legitimately his because Jesus died on the cross and when we by faith accept that we are legally brought into this new authority um, under our father and the old is wiped out and the new is started so that's like amazing before we even start so to bring that into my story um so Josh if you look at us as a family you know Josh didn't do anything to earn um or to be chosen you know he just we chose to adopt him, you know, we wanted him as our son. And it's such a beautiful picture of, I think, why Paul chooses to use this word, adoption, because um, it speaks about choice and it speaks about how God chose us. And I think for me, having gone through like a very painful journey to get to that point of having Josh in our family, it also just, I think, just demonstrates something of the 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 price that's that we were willing to to pay for a child. I don't mean financially. I mean just um, you know, just I went through two lots of surgery. I don't know how many um, appointments with doctors and bad news and roller coasters of emotions and hormones and you know all the rest of it. And um, you know, Christ went to the cross. Um, in order to bring us into this adopted position of sonship with our father. So it came at a price. And Frank, Frank and I often, um, we often say, gosh, you know, with hindsight, which we have the benefit of now, obviously, um, but we would go through all of that, all of that again in a heartbeat because we have, Josh and because it would be for Josh and because it would be mean that we had him as our son in our family like it's just such a you know every parent would understand that in terms of being what you would be willing to go through for your child but you know God God chose that at the outset the other side of the cross he desired us and he chose um to bring us into his family um so yeah, so just something that's really amazing, so it has such a beautiful picture is so when Josh was born, obviously he had a birth certificate um which had his um his name on that he was given at birth and had the details of his birth um mother on. 
And then when we came to adopt him, um, we adopted him. And then part of the process was that then we were able to um, get a new birth certificate for him because the old birth certificate was now became null and void because he had a new birth certificate with new information on his new name. So his new name is on his current birth certificate, which is a legally binding, legal, absolute document. Um, his new name, and it has my name, and it has Frank's name on as his mother and father on his birth certificate. Like, how incredible is that? <laughs> you know, literally, another such beautiful picture. This this old document that would have been legally binding that is no no longer instead there's a new one which has a new name on and which has a new father and a new mother's name on which identifies who he is now um, and one of the most amazing things it blew me away when we got the adoption um when we got the adoption papers through the final adoption papers it's actually the wording on it is incredible. It literally says that Joshua Ford is now part of Frank and Catherine Ford's family and he is their son and has full rights as a son as if he was born from Catherine's womb. How amazing <laughs> is that? Um, and just such an amazing, beautiful picture of ownership and belonging um legally documented so for me one of the other reasons that i think paul chose to use the word adoption here is because just how close this concept of adoption is to god's just to god's heart but to his very being when um you know people often ask me if they, they want to talk to me about adoption or whatever and one of the questions people often ask is like how do I know I will love a child that I've adopted as I would a child that I'd um, born myself you know and and it's just such an easy question for me like I I can answer them like in a heartbeat that there is no difference and I genuinely have like every right to say that because I have experienced both an adoption and a normal pregnancy and a biological child and there is no difference there is no difference to how much um, as a mother I love my children no difference I don't look at them any differently I don't feel about them any differently um, and that's the miracle of adoption isn't it just a the absolute miracle of adoption that um, a child who's who's not biologically anything like me racially anything like me geographically from anywhere where I'm from can be placed in my arms and can miraculously be my own um, and so amazing and I think I went what I went through with adoption you know like I kind of was like oh am I missing out by not going through like a physical pregnancy and I promise you the process I went through when we were expecting Josh was so phenomenal because I literally felt the the I think the heart of God because going through the adoption process choosing to adopt a child into our family is such the heart of God it's what God has done for us for each and every one of us so it was like by going through that process in the natural, I experienced something so incredible about the hearts of God. And that's why I'm so passionate about this verse. And because I, I just, I know the power of that word adoption and the, the heart of God behind that word. Um, when he says that that's, that's how he sees us and that's how he calls us and that's the position he has put us into in his family. Um, so, so number two, what does adoption tell us about the father? So I think for me, it, it, it says so much and we've already discussed it really, but for me, it talks about the above and the beyond of God. Like, I mean, just take my story, you know, not only did God 
placed Josh in a family, but he healed in a moment. All those years of pain that Frank and I had been through with this child that was now in our arms. You know, and I, I know this isn't particularly what Paul's talking to, but for me, it just says something about that father's heart that not, you know, he's so clever and he's so kind and weaving all these things just to work so many things to the, together for the good of those who love him. And in our story, he weaved these things so beautifully that we would have our desire to be parents fulfilled in the gift of Josh and that for Josh, he was brought into this new family and this new inheritance and this whole new path for his life um and I think um you know this verse says you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear but you received a spirit of sonship of adoption into sonship and so you see there's a difference there's slaves and there's sons and God could have fulfilled a lot of our needs almost by being slaves by our you know a lot of our physical needs would have been met we would have been protect protected we would have been you know had a master that we could look to and admire and you know but he says no I want you as sons and all that that entails so not only as a child of God do I not need to fear you know when my child comes running into my arms or into Frank's arms as a father, like not only do they not need to fear, not only do they not need to know that they are free from having to perform and do all those things that the requirements of the law would have been that Paul's talking about, but they can just, they can be, they can be sons and they can embrace all that that means in terms of yes, being loved, yes, being protected, yes, being provided for, but entering into a whole um part of what being in our family means and everything that comes with with that in terms of being in the arms of a loving um, family and father. So thirdly, um, just what does Paul talk about like the spirit of adoption? So what does that mean? And I think I think here what he means is is it's it's more than just the 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 legal. It's more than just the the position of being adopted. It's about the heart's realization of who we are because we are adopted. Um, I think it's a fine line to kind of try and explain, but you know, Josh, Josh um, if he's feeling a little bit unsure about something, he doesn't go running to go and find his adoption papers and kind of reassure himself by reading his adoption papers. Um, that he must therefore belong in our family. He just comes to um, to me or he comes to Frank for, uh, for the picture of this. He comes to his father and he's like, Daddy, I'm scared about this. Or Daddy, I really want this. Or I need this. Or I, you know, I'm worried about this. You know, it's, um, it's such a, there's such a, there is such a difference. I think it's, between, it's about that head and that heart knowledge. So yes, we are legally in this position as adopted sons, but we need to have that revelation of just who we are. And that just, that is just our being, you know, Josh just is our son. You know, there's, 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 there's no question in his mind, you know, he just, he just gets to be a son. Um, and I think, um, if any of you, um, if any of you need a picture of that, like, I mean, the, the bond between Josh and Frank is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, every, every morning, literally every morning, Josh, since I can't, I don't remember when, like, he's just always done it. Um, he runs into our room and he literally just comes and just lies on Frank, just lies on his chest, like while he's waking up, just lies there. And I just think that's such a, it's such a beautiful picture for us. You know, there's Frank, the father with his adopted son, just being, you know, he, Frank doesn't have to remind him in that moment that of whatever promises or whatever it means to be a son. He just, it's, he, in that place. He knows he's loved. He knows he's protected. He knows he's provided for. He knows that every promise that his father makes 
to him will be kept because he can feel and he knows that um, amazing position of son that he is um, to Frank and the freedom that that um, beautiful relationship brings. So I just, I hope you can kind of picture that in your mind's eye. It's just such an incredible um, picture. And I think also um, the spirit of adoption is, is God's kindness to us in our humanness. I don't know about you, but I often need like lots of reassurance. You know, so so the Holy Spirit is what is what sort of enables this whole us being sons because it's by faith that we accept what Jesus did on the cross for us um, to legally bring us into this position and by faith we um, we would receive it and so we are brought into this amazing position as adopted sons but then the verse 16 after um, this verse in Romans says that um, his spirit the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirits that we are sons of God um, and so it's it's like it's amazing so God the very thing that God did he then comes and he testifies with that spirit inside of us to, to remind us and to reassure us that this is truth and this is who we are in that Roman um, example of adoption at the time, there had to be witnesses. They actually had seven witnesses to the to the actual legal kind of signing off of the adoption so that it could never, whatever happens in the future, it could never be contested because there were witnesses to it. So like what a beautiful picture that God himself, Holy Spirit himself, testifies with our spirit that we are sons of, of God and we are adopted into that position of sonship. Um, so I think so finally, so what does that, what does that mean for us? Um, I've got a few ideas as just to what that, um, really means for us. And one of them just stems from this, this verse, um, cause it says it enables us. So this, we've received the spirit of adoption and that spirit of adoption, that realization of who we are enables us to cry Abba Father. You see, and the word cry here, um, I think it's just it's it's amazing, isn't it? When you pick a verse out like this, it um, and you look really look into why these words were chosen. You know, we could have just Paul could have said so that we can call God our Father. You know that there could be a kind of an earnestness about it. There could be a like well, we know so God is in our in that position of Father, like the Roman idea of fatherhood. You know that powerful position. I know He's got authority. I know He's got power, but. Um, this word cry is such a word that, that, that means just this sort of heartfelt, um, there's an intense, there's an intensity in this, in this cry and also, a um, uh, an intimation of intimacy. Like it insinuates that there's a, that there's an intimate heartfelt cry and that, 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 um, that Paul's saying here that because of who we are as adopted sons, this is how we can cry to Abba Father. So two words, both meaning father. So basically it's saying father, father, Abba in the, the um, which would have been a Jewish term in the Hebrew and father in the Greek, father, father. So, so some people would say that's, that's, that's um, God, that's Paul in this verse explaining it's for, it's for all. It's for all of us. This invitation to be adopted sons is for each and every one of us, Jew and Gentile. And also, I think anywhere in the Bible, like we know, you know, if something's emphasized, if something's repeated, it's something that we need to pay attention to and that there's there's an emphasis on that point. So Father, Father, this is Paul saying, it enables you to cry, Father, this is who God is is to you as um, an adopted son. So what else does it mean for us? Um, that verse in Hebrews that we can boldly approach the throne of grace, I think, you know, it's, it speaks very much of um, that we are legitimately able to approach the throne of grace because of what Jesus has done, because we are clothed in his righteousness. Um, we are able to approach the throne of grace, but we are also able to approach it because we know that we are sons because we know that our father has adopted us and brought us into that position because we are in that position like Josh on his dad's chest where when there's coronavirus when there are storms in our lives when there is pain when you are faced with 
um, diagnoses, then you are able to stand and you, because you know, you know your position, you know your legal position, but you know your position in your heart as a son, as a daughter of Father God. Um, so you know that his promises will stand. You know that he will protect you. Um, it's a heart knowledge. It's not just trying to convince ourselves in our minds. Um, and I think, lastly, what does it mean for us? It means that we have been adopted into a new order. You know, Josh, when we adopted him, has been set on a completely different path in life. Um, his trajectory in life completely changed you know we, we might never know exactly what it would have looked like before but we know it would look very different um and so there's a new there's a new reality for him um and there's an inheritance that he now has you know one day there'll be a physical you know maybe <laughs> inheritance for him but there's a there's an, a rich inheritance for him now that being part of our family just automatically brings him um and and it's the same for us you know we have we the, our reality is that we have been adopted into a new order we are now in a kingdom family where there is a new order where there is a new father in authority over our lives and just all that that encompasses. So lastly, what does it mean for us? This one is the lastly, last one. What it means for us. And um, I think it also means that we um, we start to look like our father. And we start to love the things that our father loves. You know, Josh, um, if you ask Josh what he loves most in life, he will tell you he loves surfing and he loves rugby. Built on brying. <laughs> Pretty much his dad's favourite things. Um, and, you know, I think... He he loves those things because he sees his dad loves those things and he spends time with his dad doing those things. So he begins to love those things even more. Um, and it's just also, I think, such a picture for us that actually as those adopted children who may gen genetically, I don't think genetically Joshy particularly probably would have ever been predisposed to like those things particularly. So, but because of whose we are now, we start to love the things that our father loves and our heart will beat with the same things that our father does. So it comes out, our Christian walk suddenly um, comes out of a beautiful heart place and not of a list of things to do or a list of things that we feel like we need to perform or achieve to please God. We just do it because we love him and we love the things he loves. So I think that brings me to the end. So in conclusion, um, I just, I really hope that by listening to me, you've just understood a little bit of that heart of adoption and just how incredible um, that word is and what it means, um, what it tells us about our position, what it tells us about our father and how much he loves us and desires us and how secure we are in that position as adopted sons um, of our father. So if it's okay, I just want to pray with you. Um, and then we're done. <laughs> um, oh Lord, you are so amazing. You are our amazing father. And I just want to thank you for this verse, Lord, that talks about a spirit of adoption, Lord. And by that spirit of adoption of, by knowing who we are, we can cry out to you as our father, Abba father. Lord, what a privilege. What an absolute blessing, Lord God, when we consider all that that means for us in our lives, Lord God. And I just want to pray over every person listening to this, Lord God, that you would bring, Father, just a fresh revelation, Lord God, of what it means to be adopted by you into your family. Lord God, I pray that it would be um, such a deep, seated revelation and like you promise here Lord like Paul says that you Holy Spirit will testify with our spirit that we are sons of God and Lord I just pray that Holy Spirit you would just come and you would just come and bear witness to the fact that we are adopted children of God 
um, and you would just seal that in each one of our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Amen.